This is Twit. Tech Break is brought to you by our friends at IT Pro TV, now called ACI Learning. From CompTIA, Cisco, and Microsoft to security and cloud fundamentals, your team can master it all with IT Pro from ACI Learning. Twit listeners can receive up to 65% off an IT Pro Enterprise Solution Plan. Based on your team's size, you'll receive a properly quoted discount tailored to your needs. Visit go.acilearning.com slash twit today. Here's the question. What can make things worse for a very widely deployed public facing internet server, which is like server family, which is found to be vulnerable to remote code execution by anyone, meaning any unauthenticated connection, thanks to classic buffer overruns? What can make it worse? Well, how about that server's publisher ignoring the ZDI, you know, the Zero Day Initiative's attempts at responsible disclosure of these problems to them for over a year? Oh, boy. Yikes. Ooh. The, ser and, um, the server in question is the most popular server on the Internet. It's the open source Exim, E-X-I-M. Oh a lot of people use this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Three and a half million people to, uh, to, at, at last count by Shodan. To real assure people, who, uh, our sponsor Fastmail uses Cyrus, not Exim. But a yep. lot of others do. Yes. A lot of others. So, three and a half million currently exposed online based on a recent Shodan search. Most of them in the U.S. I think it's 1.9 million some were in the United States, followed by Russia and Germany in second and third places. Back in June of 2022... ZDI reached out to Exim to inform them of multiple known highly critical problems that had been found by an anonymous researcher. Um, and we're talking about highly critical as in a CVS score of 9.8, which, as we know, that, that's difficult to get. On June 14th of last year, 2022, after asking for and receiving a contact you know, contact information for the right person to speak to with Exim, ZDI reported the trouble. So that was June 14th, 2022. Then ZDI waited and waited and waited until a little more than 10 months had passed. On April 25th of this year, they asked for an update. Exim said, huh? <laughs> and asked ZDI to please resend the reports. On May 10th, ZDI resent the vulnerability reports. Then another four months went by until finally last Monday, the 25th of what September, uh, ZDI again asked for an update while also informing Exim that you know we've been we've been patient enough. We're going to publish the entire case as a zero-day advisory in two days, which was last Wednesday. And ZDI has written in their disclosure, they said, quote, Given the nature of the vulnerability, the only salient mitigation strategy is to restrict interaction with the application which is, you know, a very political way of saying, unplug the server now. Uh, two days later, last Friday, Bleeping Computer's headline read, millions of XM mail servers exposed to zero-day remote code execution attacks. Bleeping Computer wrote, a critical zero-day vulnerability in all versions of all versions of XM mail transfer agent, you know, MTA software, can let unauthenticated attackers gain remote code execution on Internet exposed servers. Yes, that's all three and a half million of them. Found, they said found by an anonymous security researcher and disclosed through Trend Micro's zero day initiative. The security flaw is due to an out of bounds write weakness found in the SMTP service. While this type of issue can lead to software crashes or corruption of data following successful exploitation, it can also be abused by attackers for code or command execution on vulnerable servers. 
ZDI Security Advisory published on Wednesday, meaning two days before last Friday when when Bleeping Computer published this, explains, quote, the specific flaw exists within the SMTP service, which listens on TCP port 25 by default. The issue results from the lack of proper validation of user supplied data, which can result in a write past the end of a buffer. An attacker can leverage this vulnerability to execute code in the context of the service account, unquote. While, and Bleeping Computer continues, while ZDI reported the vulnerability to the XM team in June of 2022 and resent info on the flaw at the vendor's request in May of 2023, the developers failed to provide an update on their patch progress. As a result, ZDI published an advisory on September 27th with details on the zero day and a full timeline of all exchanges with the Exum team. Okay, so following ZDI's actions, there was some back and forth on the open source security mailing list where ZDI wrote, quote, ZDI reached out multiple times to the developers regarding multiple bug reports with little progress to show for it. After our disclosure timeline was exceeded by many months, we notified the maintainer of our intent to publicly disclose these bugs, at which time we were told, you do what you do, unquote. So, for all of our listeners, not much imagination is required to know what's going to happen next. The Exim email message transfer agent system is open source and is thus wide open for inspection by anyone. And the ZDI write-up says that the flaw is in a component that handles authentication. So now the world knows that somewhere around three and a half million of those servers all of which are publicly exposed to the Internet, contain multiple classic remotely exploitable buffer overrun flaws enabling remote code execution. So, get yourself some popcorn, get comfortable, sit back, relax, and be glad that you're not running a not-yet-patched Exum server on your network. And watch what happens next. I have a feeling we'll be talking about this for at least the next couple of weeks because, as we know, even if patching was made available and these the people running the servers were notified, there would still be, you know, an exponential curve of patching with lots of machines never getting the message being on their networks and being left unpatched the bad guys don't even have to reverse engineer from the binary they could just go oh good let's just read the code and find the problem so that's the world we live in today <laughs> <laughs>